Hello viewers, welcome back to computer networking classes. So in previous video we had studied about different streaming features. Now in this video we will be talking about CDN named content distribution networks. So why do we need content distribution networks? Okay, the answer is video distribution. So one basic approach is that to store all the videos in one universal data center and from there all the videos are distributed. Now this approach will not work for large number of videos as if uh, the end user is far far away from the data center then the transmission rate will be greater than consumption rate of the video and we will experience lagging and freezing type of things. And then the second one will be if there is a popular video it has to send many times over same communication link which will waste network bandwidth. And third, of course, there will be the single point of failure. If the uh, main data center is down, then whole network will be down. So what is CDNs? CDNs are basically clusters of servers basically installed on different geographical locations. And from there, video will be distributed to end users. Now, it may, pri uh, pro it may be private, CDN, or it may be third party and uh, example is Akamai CDN which serves Netflix and Hulu type of content provider schemes and uh, CDN typically adopt two approaches okay so one can be enter deep or other can be bring home so what is enter deep or what is bring home so enter deep means uh, Installing large number of server clusters to different geographical locations and from there video will be distributed to end users. Now goal is to get close to end user. As it is distributed, maintenance and managing of clusters is difficult. So there is a, another approach is called bring home. Here less number of server clusters are installed and they are massive data centers and they are installed uh, near the POPs of many tier 1 ISPs. So these are the two approaches for CDNs. So what are the advantages of CDN? So it requires less maintenance and uh, of course lower throughput because less distance has to be traveled. Once clusters are installed, CDN replicates content to clusters. So videos are replicated in clusters and served to the end user. Not necessary to place video in each cluster. So all the clusters don't necessarily have to store all the videos. There may be some video which are there in one cluster and not in second cluster or other cluster. And uh, some CDN use simple pull strategy. If they are not having any video, they will pull out from the another server cluster. Now CDN operations, so when browser requests the video, CDN must intercept the request. So it has to intercept the request and determine a suitable CDN cluster for that client and redirect the client's request to a server in that cluster. So it is done in six steps. So what are these six steps? Now let's say this is a client and these are netcinema.com server. And this is authoritative net cinema server. This is content provider net cinema. And CDN is the content distribution network. And this is server cluster from which data will be served. So let's say this user is visiting the site netcinema.com. And from there he has pressed or clicked a link. So the link will be processed by the local DNS server LDNS. And then it will process the request to the authoritative server of the net cinema DNS server. From there we will get the IP of this content provider will give the IP of the CDN named King CDN authoritative server. Okay so in next step he will share the IP of the closest CDN cluster to the client according to LDNS. So the location of King CDN is decided on the basis of LDNS. And from there, it will be processed to the client in fifth step. And there, 
from that uh, from that point uh, king cdn will serve the client with the video so these are happening in the six steps so talking about cluster selection strategies so in fifth step as you can see in fourth and fifth step this authoritative king cdn server will give the ip of the closest cdn content distribution server so how the selection is being made it is done in three ways so one simple strategy is which is the geographically closest give uh, the ip of that geographically closest server but this is not uh, good in some approaches where geographically closest cluster may not be closest in terms of network path so if the network path is uh, longer for any cluster then this approach will not be used or this is the drawback of geographically closest server selection strategy so for this we need a second strategy so what is second strategy it is to determine best cluster based on current traffic conditions so by the using current traffic conditions he will get to know that which is the closest serving cluster for a ldns so for that for instance a cdn can have each of its clusters periodically send probes to all of ldns to calculate delays so he will send a basic type of message to all the ldns and calculate the distance or traffic delays after that the links are, link states are calculated and given to the authoritative server but here is a major drawback that ldns are configured to not respond to such probes so instead of sending extra traffic link link properties can be generated by synac means a synchronizing ac acknowledgement server to so this is a bit in the http request and server to client and c2s means client to server acknowledgement during tcp three way three way handshake so this is some uh, simple strategy to get to know the traffic information by synac bit now the third strategy is using ip anycast so here the authoritative server will give the same ip to all the clusters or cluster servers and uh, a basic bgp protocol will be followed by the ldns and the one with the uh, closest path will be selected for serving so what bgp will do he will uh, he will derive the closest path from the ldns and the server which is having a closest path will serve the client so in next video we will be talking about case studies related to netflix youtube and kankan till then thank you